Oh, hello, hello. Yes, 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 here, come, come, come closer. Too close, too close, much too close. Back away, back away. <sighs> hello, hello, how are you doing? Uh, I am Finestra's previous assistant, and since I doubt that she is going to want to teach you any of her ways as an alchemist, you know, as they do, uh, I have decided myself to give you some tips and strategies to basically be a better alchemist. Now these are top tips straight from Finestra Orwin herself. So I can't wait for you. Hopefully that was not her, but I cannot wait for you to experience these top tips with me today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and look at the alchemist in Merchant's Cove. Now the Alchemist is very fun to play in Merchant's Cove and this is not going to be a how to play, this is going to be more of a learning how to play your first couple games better as the Alchemist. So if you do want to learn how to actually set up the character, definitely check out the handy notebook included in the box for the Alchemist herself. But what we are going to cover today is I'm going to be giving you some tips and strategies to play the Alchemist better. Finestra is all about timing and planning, and as such, we're going to be going over some of the manipulation of how she's able to create these goods. Now, when you are playing her, you are going to be grabbing marbles from your decanter. You're going to be moving those marbles between your cauldrons and determining which recipes you want to create. And by those recipes, you're either going to be creating goods or you're going to be making black ichor in order to have a basic wild resource there in that cauldron. And all the while, you'll also be able to be brewing these recipes using black Icker, and when you do, that's going to be collecting in a corruption cauldron, and so you're going to be wanting to avoid to fill that up in order to not gain corruption while brewing. But really, the most fun puzzle of this character is taking ingredients from that decanter. You're essentially going to be choosing a color and collecting all of that color in that row, and then anything that drops down, you'll also collect it if it matches that color. And remember, the black ichor is also a wild resource, so those would count for it. And once you're grabbing from there, you're going to be pulling from your bag and filling up the decanter with random ingredients. So really manipulating this decanter is going to be the most important part to your gameplay as the alchemist. Now let's talk about what specific recipes you can make within these cauldrons. Using any two ingredients of the same color, you can make a small good. Using two ingredients of the same color and one of any other color, you can make one large good of that color. And using any three ingredients, no matter the color, will help you create a black ichor, and that will drop down from this space here on whichever cauldron you're using, and will be a permanent wild resource within that cauldron. And this is one of the many ways that you can really build up an engine as this character to make it a little bit easier for future recipes. We've talked about the recipes, now let's talk about the staff actions available, starting with the scrubber. The scrubber allows you to return up to two ingredients from any cauldron or cauldrons to the alchemy bag. The forger allows you to take one ingredient either from the decanter or from any cauldron and place it in any vacant brewing cauldron space. The understudy allows you to take the brew action in up to two brewing cauldrons, essentially being a less powerful brew action. And then security allows you to choose and discard one corruption card from your supply. Now that we've got an idea of how the character works and operates, we're going to go into some of these strategies, starting with the first one, which is that this character, Finestra, is a character of great versatility. Now, crafting goods of different types is a lot easier and more versatile but it does take more time and more planning, and you're going to benefit from that planning. You are going to be wanting to take full advantage of that brew action. If you don't have all of your cauldrons filled, it might not be the best time to use it. You want to be able to plan out in the future on what the market is presenting, what all of the characters that are coming in are presenting, and you're going to want to kind of plan out exactly what you're working on. 
The nice thing about the cauldron system as opposed to say the blacksmith is that you can theoretically make four small goods or forge large goods at any given time, which is really, really impressive. Though it does take a little bit more strategy and finessing to get to that point. Now more towards the beginning of the game, I am not super focused on trying to get the exact colors for what's coming in from the market. I'm actually more focused on just getting a lot of resources in general. So if I'm looking at the decanter and I see an opportunity to grab five marbles of one color, I am going to take that five marbles of one color, even if it's not the colors that are matching what's coming in on that market. Grabbing the color from the decanter that's going to produce you the most is going to be more important than grabbing two of the color that you need that's going to be a better sale in the market. You're trying to look for really, really good combinations of colors in that decanter and puzzling out what's going to be most beneficial to get the most ingredients in one action. Practically each of the decanter locations is going to cost you a lot of time. And if you're moving back and forth between those to collect more and more ingredients because you didn't get enough, that's going to cost a lot of time. But if you're going there and collecting a ton of ingredients, you're gonna be spending less time and filling up those cauldrons faster. So be more economic with what colors you're grabbing and that will end up being more beneficial for you based on time as well as the amount of goods that you'll be crafting. This is a tip that I think a lot of people overlook when playing the alchemist. It's that there is a certain number of each color of marble within your alchemy bag. You're going to have six black ingredients, six red ingredients, six green ingredients, and you're only gonna have four yellow and four blue. And this matters because if you're able to calculate what you have left in the bag, you're going to be able to kind of see exactly what colors you can expect in the future. Depending on what you have in your cauldron and what's in the decanter, you can know kind of what to expect is going to be coming out of the bag. So what I always advise is whenever you're thinking about taking away from the decanter, always look about what you already have in the cauldron and what's already shown on that decanter so that you can kind of plan out what color is probably going to be going in to that decanter when you have to resupply it. And manipulating this concept can actually help you kind of know what colors you're going to be having to get in a little bit or at least what colors are going to be coming into that decanter. Now, Icker, is it important? Is it important to reveal those sponsorship icons? In my opinion, I think it's essential to reveal those sponsorship icons. You're going to want to look at what is the adventure type that is likely going to be left behind that is going to add up those guild hall points. You're going to want to get those marketplace sponsorships as soon as possible. You're just going to want to fill these cauldrons with random colors in that early round so that you can get the black ichor down there. This is also going to be kind of the main source of your points for that first round. If you're able to properly get them opened up, then you won't be that far behind if you're not selling any actual goods to the marketplace. The alchemist is often hit with bad luck when you're getting those decanter ingredients falling through and they're just not matching up. You have to have those staff actions ready in order to manipulate the decanter for your own good. And so that is why it is always my goal to get three in that first market phase round. The most important ones are forager and understudy, and then you should also get scrubber next. If you can get all three of those before the first market phase, you are in a great position for the rest of the game. The only downside to this is that you might not really know exactly how the guild hall is gonna go, so the symbols that you're grabbing to fill in those action spots might not get you that many points. However, it does give you a goal to try and leave certain types of venturers on those ships so that you can supply what you've got already revealed on your staff action bar. But with that, that is it for The Alchemist. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like as well as subscribe if you want to see the next video in the series. Let's go ahead and drop the beat. Bye.